Today we will explain the active principle idolimumab, Humira, its side effects, its doses, contraindications, warnings, mechanism of action, pregnancy and lactation. What is adalimumab? Adalimumab is a medication used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, psoriasis, ulcerative colitis, suppurative hydrogenitis, uveitis, and Crohn's disease. The brand names of adalimumab are, Humira, Amgevita, Abrilida, Hirimos. Mechanism of Action, MOA, of adalimumab. It binds specifically to TNF and neutralizes its biological function by blocking its interaction with the P55 and P75 TNF receptors on the cell surface. Adalimumab also modulates the biological response induced or regulated by TNF, including changes in the levels of adhesion molecules responsible for leukocyte migration. Adverse Reactions and Side Effects of Adalimumab Respiratory Tract Infections including upper and lower respiratory tract infections, pneumonia, sinusitis, pharyngitis, nasopharyngitis, and herpes virus pneumonia. Leukopenia, including neutropenia and agranulocytosis, anemia. Increased lipids, headache, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. Increased liver enzymes. Rash, including exfoliative rash. Musculoskeletal pain. Injection site reaction, including erythema at the injection site. Adalimumab interactions. Enhanced toxicity with abatacept, anakinra antagonizes the effect of live vaccines. Pregnancy and adalimumab. There is no experience in the use of adalimumab in pregnant women. Not recommended. May affect normal immune response in newborns. Breastfeeding and adalimumab. It is not known if adalimumab is excreted in breast milk or absorbed systemically after ingestion. However, because human immunoglobulins are excreted in milk, women should not breastfeed for at least five months after the last treatment with adalimumab. Effects on the ability to drive with adalimumab The influence of adalimumab on the ability to drive and use machines is small. Dizziness, including vertigo, impaired vision, and fatigue may occur after administration of adalimumab. Therapeutic Indications of Adalimumab Active Rheumatoid Arthritis in Adults, with insufficient response to disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs including methotrexate or not previously treated in combination with methotrexate and as monotherapy in case of intolerance or when continued treatment with methotrexate is not possible. Juvenile Idiopathic Arthritis Active polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis from the age of 2 with insufficient response to disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs in combination with methotrexate and as monotherapy in case of intolerance or when continued treatment with methotrexate is not possible. Arthritis associated with active emphysitis from the age of 6 years with insufficient response or are intolerant to conventional treatment. Severe active ankylosing spondylitis with inadequate response to conventional therapy. Treatment of adults with severe axial spondyloarthritis without radiographic evidence of AD, but with objective signs of inflammation such as elevated CRP and or MRI, who have had an inadequate response or intolerance to NSAIDs. Active and progressive psoriatic arthritis in adults with insufficient response to previous therapy with disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Psoriasis, moderate to severe chronic plaque psoriasis in adults who are candidates for systemic therapy. Severe chronic plaque psoriasis in children and adolescents aged 4 years and older who have had an inadequate response or are not suitable candidates for topical therapy or phototherapy. Moderate to severe active hydrodenitis suppurativa, reverse acne, in adults and adolescents over 12 years of age with an inadequate response to conventional systemic therapy of hydrodenitis suppurativa. Moderate to severe active Crohn's disease in adults who have not responded to adequate and complete therapy with corticosteroids and or immunosuppressants, or are intolerant or have contraindications to these therapies. Moderate to severe active Crohn's disease in children, aged 6 years and older 
who have had an insufficient response to conventional therapy including primary nutritional treatment, one corticosteroid or one immunomodulator, or who are intolerant or have a contraindication to these therapies. Moderate to severe active ulcerative colitis in adults who have had an inadequate response to conventional therapy including corticosteroids in 6 mercaptopurin or azathioprine, or who have intolerance or contraindications to these therapies. Uveitis, treatment of intermediate and posterior non-infectious uveitis and panvitis in adults who have had an inadequate response to corticosteroids who need to decrease their treatment with corticosteroids, or in whom treatment with corticosteroids is inappropriate. Pediatric uveitis, treatment of chronic non-infectious pediatric anterior uveitis in patients from the age of 2 years who have had an inadequate response or are intolerant of conventional therapy, or in whom conventional therapy is not appropriate. Dosage of adalimumab. Subcutaneous route. In adults. Rheumatoid arthritis with methotrexate, 40 mg in alternate weeks as a single dose. In monotherapy, if they experience a decrease in their response they can increase to 40 mg every week. Psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, axial spondylitis without radiographic evidence of AD, 40 mg every other week as a single dose. Moderate to severe active Crohn's disease, 80 mg in week 0 followed by 40 mg in week 2. If a faster response is needed, it can be changed to 160 mg in week 0, 4 injections in one day or 2 injections per day for 2 consecutive days, followed by 80 mg in week 2, being aware of the increased risk of adverse reactions during the start of treatment. Maintenance, 40 mg in alternate weeks. Psoriasis, 80 mg, followed by 40 mg in alternate weeks starting one week after the initial dose. If after 16 weeks, the response is inadequate, the dosage frequency can be increased to 40 mg weekly. If an adequate response is achieved by increasing the dosing frequency, the dose may be subsequently reduced to 40 mg every other week. Hydrodenitis suppurativa, initial dose. 160 mg on day 1, 4 injections of 40 mg on 1 day or 2 daily injections of 40 mg on 2 consecutive days, followed by 80 mg 2 weeks later, on day 15, 2 injections of 40 mg on 1 day. 2 weeks later, day 29, continue with a weekly 40 mg dose. Antibiotic treatment can be continued if necessary. A topical antiseptic liquid is recommended daily for suppurative hydro-drainage lesions. If after 12 weeks of treatment there is no improvement, consider continuing the treatment. Moderate to severe ulcerative colitis, induction 160 mg at week 0, 4 injections in a day or 2 injections a day for 2 consecutive days, and 80 mg at week 2, then the recommended dose, 40 mg slash each 2 weeks. If there is a decrease in response, the dose frequency can be increased to 40 mg per week. Uveitis, initial, 80 mg, followed by 40 mg given every other week starting one week after the initial dose. Limited experience with monotherapy at the beginning of treatment. May be started in combination with corticosteroids or another non-biological immunomodulatory agent. Concomitant treatment with corticosteroids can be adjusted starting two weeks after the start of treatment with adalimumab. In pediatric population, polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis, between 2 to 12 years, 24 mg M2 of body surface area up to a single dose of 20 mg for patients between 2 to 4 years and up to a maximum single dose of 40 mg in patients between 4 to 12 years, in alternate weeks, 13 years and older, 40 mg every other week regardless of body surface area response within the first 12 weeks of treatment. Enthesitis associated arthritis, age 6 years and older. 24 mg M2 of body surface area up to a single maximum dose of 40 mg, every other week as a single dose. Crohn's disease, patients under 40 kg, 40 mg in week 0 followed by 20 mg in week 2. If a faster response is needed, it can be changed to 80 mg in week 0, 2 injections in one day, 
followed by 40 mg in week 2, being aware of the higher risk of adverse reactions during the onset of the maintenance, 20 mg in alternate weeks. Patients over 40 kg, 80 mg in week 0 followed by 40 mg in week 2. If a faster response is needed, it can be changed to 160 mg in week 0, 4 injections in one day or 2 injections per day for 2 consecutive days, followed by 80 mg in week 2, being aware of the higher risk of suffering adverse reactions during the beginning of the treatment induction dose. Maintenance 40 mg every other week. Severe chronic plaque psoriasis in children and adolescents from 4 years old, 0.8 mg slash kg up to a maximum of 40 mg, weekly for the first two doses and in alternate weeks for the following ones. Consider continuation of therapy after 16 weeks if there is no response. Hydrodenitus suppurativa in adolescents, from 12 years old, weighing at least 30 kg, recommended dose, 80 mg in week 0 followed by 40 mg in alternate weeks starting in week 1. In adolescents with inadequate response to 40 mg in alternate weeks, consider increasing the frequency of dosing to 40 mg weekly. There is no relevant use in children under 12 years in this indication. Pediatric uveitis, there is no experience in the treatment with adalimumab without concomitant treatment with methotrexate. Safety and efficacy in children 4 to 17 years old for ulcerative colitis has not been established. For children younger than 4 years there is no relevant use. There is no relevant use for the indications of ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis in the pediatric population. Contraindications of adalimumab Hypersensitivity to adalimumab Active tuberculosis or other serious infections such as sepsis, and opportunistic infections. Moderate to severe heart failure. Warnings and precautions for adalimumab Neurological effects, caution with pre-existing or newly emerging CNS or peripheral demyelinating disorders. Allergic reactions, stop treatment if they occur. Malignant neoplastic diseases and lymphoproliferative disorders. Hematological reactions. CHF, caution in mild cardiac insufflation, NEHA class I-2. Autoimmune processes, can lead to the formation of AC concomitant with biological FAMES or TNF antagonists such as anakinra, abatacept, not recommended. Surgery, infection control. Reactivation of hepatitis B in chronic carriers, monitor signs and symptoms of active HBV infection during treatment and up to several months later. Infection, monitoring for infection, including tuberculosis, before, during, and up to four months after treatment. Do not start treatment with adalimumab if there are active infections, chronic or localized, until they are controlled. If latent tuberculosis is diagnosed, consider risk-benefit and initiate anti-tuberculosis prophylaxis as well as in patients with multiple risk factors or a history of active or latent tuberculosis. Severe infections, including sepsis, of bacterial, mycobacterial, invasive fungal, parasitic, viral or other opportunistic infections such as listeriosis, legionellosis and pneumocystis have been reported. In these cases, discontinue treatment and initiate appropriate antimicrobial or antifungal treatment until the infection is controlled. In pediatric patients, an update of the vaccination schedule according to current vaccination guidelines is recommended before starting treatment. Do not vaccinate with live vaccines liver failure and adalimumab. Caution. It has not been studied in this type of patients, there are no dose recommendations. Kidney failure and adalimumab. Caution. Not studied in these patients, no dose recommendations.